All right, so if you have an open box and you're to lay a box on its side and sketch it looking directly into the open end, if it were large enough inside the box, would be the interior of a room. So the one showing here, we're going to hop into one point perspective just for a minute. And then bop here. And so this is, actually we got that down here. So let's do it like they got it in here. Need an extra hand for my book. Right, you know, let's do this. That'll allow me to do this much easier. Do, 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 do. Uh, but also, how are all of you wonderful folks out there doing? All right, so we're going to have a little, little, little room here. Look at that, that got all jacked up. That's fine. Doesn't need to be perfect. How you doing, man? Ooh, D and D today, huh? What are you are you jamming or are you playing? Get this room set up here. There we go. That's better. Alrighty. Well, you know what? Nice. What are you playing? Um, and then let's say you were to draw a door in here. It'll be about what that height to a door. Sure. And then. Standard height for a door, for me anyway, would put um, my eye line about there. So that means this eye line, is the eye line we will use for perspective in a room like this. Oh. That would be something like that for the eye line around that room. Um, and that can be used, as we've discussed in the past, in order to gauge the height of anything in that room by perspective. Um, if you're standing in this room, your eye level would be about the height of the mark on the door. And so then when we move into two-point perspective, if we're going to shift here. I'm going to move this up so that the mark on the door and the door itself is indicated in this here. All right, so if I were to pull this into perspective two point, let's go ahead and do this now. Really need to get like a, a thing for my book here. Uh, okay, I draw the end of the box as if it were in a room in which you're looking. Do, do, do. We got that. We're gonna skip ahead to three, two point perspective because one point perspective is unnecessary from here on in. Interior of the room by drawing the walls for ceiling, windows, line pass through this vanishing point. Oh, book just fell on the floor. All right, so this we'll do here, and then that's going to slope down for that perspective. Okay, and I'm just gonna get rid of this guy here. Ready, doorway, doorway here. So that line would go continue through to two point perspective. Uh, roof will say is about there. Nope, wrong way. Roof will say is about there. So 
So then as I'm tracing this out, I'm following this line, the green line here that lets me know when I'm getting close to the right, um, the right length for everything here. Alrighty. And then we'll say there's a window here. So windows would be about what, about halfway at the eye line. Um, so with the eye line being here, we're going to say about there. It's going to follow suit on this guy and then this guy. We got like a little window there. Okay, so we're still in two point perspective here. And so if you were going to draw, now turn the box so it's necessary to use both vanishing points, which we just did. Placing the furniture with the room is as simple as placing blocks which we did. Um, so as we covered in episode one, uh, placing blocks is a good way to build out just about anything. So in this case, let's go ahead and place a couple blocks here. We'll place, I'm gonna do this in red. pretty close to the, the line, so we'll actually uh, be okay there. And then we'll say over here, we'll do, we'll do that. We'll do this. And we will say, follow that line blue right there. And we'll say this is like two blocks. And then let's go ahead and do this. I'm just placing blocks in perspective. I got these handy dandy perspective lines on Psi. But if you don't, you just need to find two points along the same line and draw out from there um, to get two point perspective. So all the lines going um, this way are going to go towards this point, and all the lines going this way are going to converge on this point. Yeah, yeah, the perspective rules in Psy were, are just amazing. Um, I know you've probably seen this before. Ah, how you doing, Magnus? I know you've probably seen this before since I talk about it a lot here at the loop. But uh, Ravener, if um, um, I can literally, while I have this on, not draw outside of my two-point perspective, no matter how hard I want to. Uh, very, very convenient, especially for doing like base blockouts and stuff. Uh, I think Photoshop has something similar, but I don't use Photoshop, so I don't know how to use it. Uh, Magnus just has a spiffy ass uh, Kickstarter comment. Um, finally posted about it. So you should go ahead and drop a link to that, Magnus. And then we'll say like two more blocks here. So do this. And I'm sorry to hear about your experiences with role-playing here, Thulu. I wish you, uh, I don't really have a ton of time online, but I wish you lived closer because getting stuff together um, in person is much easier for me, even though I play online. So I have placed these blocks, built shapes out of these blocks around this various room. But then you can just turn those into, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing it here, but you see if you're going into it, then I can take those and just turn them into uh, furniture. Uh, maybe this would be like a couch. Whoop. Whoop. And this could be like a table. Or whatever. Whoop. 
And then this is like a refrigerator because they're poor millennials and they have to like have everything in one room. So then their bed's like over here, you know. Um, and so that's why you can use this to build uh, furniture up by just blocking out a room in perspective first. So then the next thing we're going to do, this is going to be placing things along the line. If they're not all set in a grid, if we're going to be drawing a room. Doing bricks like that, everything is going to be along the same grid. If you were to look at it, um, everything would be kind of set up perpendicular or parallel. If you were going to have something slightly off kilter. So if I was going to say have... Let's see, I'm actually... I'm going to build another room. Turn you off, put you on, go green. So you can do... Something like there. And say something like here. And so you're just choosing random points on this line. If you don't have anything built yet, you can choose random points. If you do, you can reverse engineer this. Um, so in this case, let's see if I'm doing this right. Oh, probably, no, that one's correct, definitely. So that one, it's all going to the same one on this side. But when it comes to this vanishing point, we're going to shift back over here, switch to black, and then that's going to be there. And then back up to here. Got a little bit of warp there. I think because of the placement of that. So that's just something to be careful about, I guess. It's got a decent amount of warp on it, and it probably shouldn't. But it doesn't cover that very very well. Um, vanishing points of furniture are not the same. Vanishing points. Okay, multiple points. Duplicate the perspective ruler. And then move it that way and then let's see if that works uh, maybe i would have to shift both of them over um in order to uh to get what i was looking for so let's say this is kitty corner to the room We'll take this and we'll shift it more here. Okay, you know what I need to do is I need to get this vanishing point eye line marked off so that I know where to move this one to. Okay, I think this is what I was supposed to be doing here. Yeah, this I know how two point perspective works in general. This is just shifting if something is not square with the room, and then I wasn't sure based on this if the second vanishing point stayed where the where where it was while you shifted the other one. But I think both of the vanishing points need to move as you're shifting stuff around. As I moved it closer this way, this one will actually take on a look of one point perspective as I place it in this room and is placed kind of off kilter. Um, and then that. We'll do that. Okay. And then I'm just going to turn that off. Because then that's going to do. That.
And so this is how um, this is how you would set up something so that like basically the difference in what I'm doing here is that oh not you one anymore is that if everything goes to the same vanishing point that means everything in the room is square the right angles are square to the layout and the corners and shape of the room. If you are shifting your perspective line, um, your perspective points around the eye line in order to get new perspectives for objects, it means that they are not in that way and are instead kind of set up like you know, like like so in the room. Um, so that's how you get that look of having um, having not everything be perfectly squared gridded. So this one is this. And then this one right here is uh, this one that I did earlier. Uh, but yeah, so I have confirmed that when you when you shift something, you have to shift both points on that on that perspective. So yeah, this is if everything is square, all of these points are going to go to the exact same um, same vanishing point because they're all directly square with the shape of the room, with the walls of the room, with the angles of the room. And then here, if everything's off kilter each of these items is going to have a different vanishing point than the room. It's vanishing points, plural, unless it's in one point, than the room itself. Uh, this just showed how you use two-point perspective to build the inside of a room, uh, which is just a box. And then, like we covered in the first, uh, first one, it uses bricks. You can kind of lay out that room. And then if you want to, you can, like, turn that room into furniture, the blocks into furniture, whatever. <laughs> If everything in the room is directly in line with the walls and angles of the room, like this up here, it will look like this down here, where all of those lines are going to the same vanishing points. However, if you're in a room where, like say the couch is shifted to an angle so that it's not directly, um, directly square with the wall, or the TV shifted in the center of the room, it'll look something like this, where everything isn't quite right. That means each of these has different vanishing points. And so what we just did there is we just shifted them along. Um, so, so this is the perspective of the room, this one here, where you can see it's here. The vanishing points for the room itself are here and here. And then we shift it over here, and I have this vanishing, and so I'm going to drag this, let's go like here. And then we'll say this thing is right down here, oh. right down here in front of this guy here. Wait. Oh no, I'm too close to one point there. Haha, <laughs> still, still shifted over. So let's do it over here. I was like, why am I getting warpage? Oh yeah. Okay, and so all of these have slightly different vanishing points. Like this one here, even this one in front of it. If you took this, oh, actually, accidentally shifted to the same vanishing point, I think. <laughs> I did. I accidentally put that on the same vanishing point as this guy here. <laughs> these two go off to this vanishing point which was accidentally in the right one 
Um, these, this one had had more of a one point perspective -y feel to it because of how it was angled. However, none of them maintain the perspective of the room, which the lines go out here. Oh, not the line. The lines and vanishing points are way out here. Um, so even trying to get close to these would be over here and over here. And this guy's all fucked because it's one point in the middle. Uh, so yeah, if a if something is not quite straight in the room, uh, if something is not quite angled so that it's directly with everything, they're all going to have different vanishing points. Uh, so yeah, pieces of furniture can be placed facing in any direction, providing their vanish points are all on the same eye level. That's that middle area we're talking about, horizon point also. Vanishing points of the furniture are not the same as those of the room. It means the furniture hasn't been placed corner-wise, not square with the room. Oh, and Francina, um, I'm fairly certain that this book only gave me half of the information with the roof thing we were running into the other night, and that those have to change. Um, now we're going to get into something that I've actually been doing for a while, and I've kind of gone over for a little bit, but it's going to go into it a little bit more. And that's how to find the center of a thing in perspective. So first, let's go and shift back to one point because I get to do nice straight lines with that. So we've seen me do this a couple times with stuff. Why did I do that in blue when it should be black so it is easy to view? Um, so we've seen me do this in the past already um, with some stuff. But if you were going to try to find the middle of something that the exact middle you do this. And that is how you find the middle of a square. That's the middle that way. That's the middle that way. Uh, place a brick upon your drawing table with shock draw cross lines on the face of the brick from corner to corner. These cross lines are called intersecting diagonals. The lines across at the center of the face, mark C. Okay, we'll pretend that we're playing along with the book here. Mark C. Um, sketch the brick in perspective now. Turn off everything and go. That's bring... There you go. Let's go ahead and grab this one, actually. <laughs> fancy schooling. Haku and their fancy schooling. So let's say we got a bricky brick. Ooh, that's a... Uh, that's fine. We can, we can have a little warp right now. I did this in the other direction. Okay, so it's going to be the same thing for all these sides. If you want to find the middle, you just grab a line tool and do some diagonals. Guessing takes a lot less time, but then it's much easier for for jerks like Carthula to be like, your perspective's off, which is his favorite thing to do to artists. If you know what you're doing, you can say, no, it's not. But if you're just going to lean into it, you can say, I know. That also works. So, for this, we know that the middle of this brick in perspective... Yeah. Yeah, I grabbed Psy here because Psy is super duper cheap. Psy was like 40, 40 bucks, I think.
but also like once you learn how to do this kind of stuff winging it becomes very um winging it becomes very much easier um so yeah these are uh, that's how you find all of the half points in perspective same deal no matter what direction it's all going uh does that all make sense to people uh, so this this side here yes excellent house in perspective so we're gonna draw a house and then we're gonna say hey i want to know how to do a roof on this bad boy um and so to do that i want to make sure uh roof's gonna come directly into the middle of uh the point it's going to come directly into the middle of this guy if it's a normal roof. Obviously not everything. Yeah, no, like once you once you know everything, you can stop being so precise, but learning it first is the important part. So, so I'm going to do that there. I'm going to hop back to this perspective here. Shift back to like a red so that it becomes obvious. And then we're going to go, hey, boom, that's the middle there, which means we know the roof there. We'll say it's that high, because why not? And then from there, we can determine that the roof's going to slightly go through there. And we'll shift back here. And so now, uh, now I understand this here, Francita, a little bit more. Each house is supposed to be slightly different if they're in a grid, because in this point, this is when I would do do the up and down um, perspective, find where this is, and then carry off of that. Um, so in this instance, let's go ahead and say. Let's go ahead and say, yeah, we'll go ahead and say this one's here. It might be a little extreme and get a little weird, but that's fine. And so that is how you would find that middle using finding the middle to start getting the proper roof set up there. Um, this can be used for a number of things, like uh, the next thing on here is tennis courts. So then, again, same dealio here. Then you have come to the right place, because that is what Magnus do, baby. You get that kind of set up there. And then so in a tennis court, net would be right here doing its sweet netty thing. Or a volleyball court or whatever. That's it right there. Sweet net. And due to perspective again, this side right here is actually the same length as this side. It's just sweet perspective stuff. Uh, sketch the top of the brick, omitting the sides, and showing the cross lines, dividing lines, going to the vanishing points. A rectangular square divided in this manner has a number of great uses in drawing. The top of the brick could be used as a tennis court. Or a formal garden. Uh, we keep doing the same thing over and over again in various ways, but I feel like everything uh, everything is kind of making sense to people at this point, so I don't think we have to you know, kick ourselves too much into this. Um, so let's say we're using the side of a brick, as we discussed. So let's say this here. Oh. Okay, so we have this guy. 
We're going to run in here and find the middle. Yeah, I'm okay with it, though, because it's allowed me to get a lot of work done. <laughs> I know that's not necessarily how it works, but it seems like that's how it works. I feel like I've also done a lot this month. Uh, so this is the middle, right? In perspective. So then, if this were, say, like a billboard and we wanted to put something here, we could follow this line all the way out here, and we could say, okay, because we know this is the middle, we need to do that. Or we could take it and make it say, we know there's a door in the very middle of this. So you can do that. And you can use it in a lot of different ways to, uh, uh, the side of the brick may be a billboard or whatever we may choose. We'll find the cross lines useful in many ways. In the drawing the billboard note of the billboard, note how the perspective center is found to be some distance to the right of the center by measurement. Uh, this one actually won't need you in. Okay, so let's say we have... I'm going to do these in a solid big color here. Let's say we have a post here and a post here. These are like fence posts or something. So in order to find, I'm gonna shift this over this way. So in order to find a, where the third one is, we'll go ahead and make three lines. So to do this here without any sort of measuring, we'll do what we've been doing with other stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and make this pass though. And then we'll go ahead and temporarily do this to find that center line, right? All right, so we know right where that center line is. We're going to hop back over here. We're going to get that center line. So then we come back over here. And to figure out where this spacing is, we're going to start there. We're going to take it through the middle of that middle line where it connects, like I was doing with the uh, buildings and stuff in the first one. And so that, fir that third post should be, where number are you? Right here. 80, about there. Uh, should be about right there. Nope. We get seasons like Hobbit gets meal, once is never enough. Um, and then if these were, you know, a little more, uh, a little less thick, it would be easier to get that perfect. But so that's how you determine that. And then from there, it's easy to keep going. And then say go here through the middle of that one there, and then it comes down there. Now, if we draw a line from the top of the first post to the straight line of the center, second post, we discover the me that it meets the baseline where the third post should be. And then you just keep doing that down the line, and it keeps indicating where um, the next post in that line would be. This is our cross line method used in different ways. In this case, we use locate the fourth side when we have three sides and the center line of the brick face. The same relationship is true when we draw the row of posts in perspective. With two posts placed, we can draw as many as we wish, correctly spaced. This rule also holds true when the divisions lie flat, like blocks of pavement on the top of a string of freight cars. The dividing lines in this case recede to the other vanishing point. These dividing lines are represented by the posts in the drawing. So in this case, we do the same thing. Drawing in the... Uh, so in perspective, it would be the same dealio. Uh, 
And so this is going to just keep on going down, and you 100% are figuring out where all those fence posts are. So let's take a look at, for instance, since we see them receding, this first segment is quite a bit longer than that segment already. And that's just going to keep going on into infinity, uh, or until the fence stops. Okay, so now we're getting into cylinders in perspective. Um, this is going to be getting into new territory for me too, but something I do desperately need to learn. Uh, place a coffee can and a mailing tube on the table. These are cylinders. The tops and bottom of these cylinders are circles. In case everyone didn't know how cylinders worked as a basis. Close one eye, hold this page edgewise, and look at the ellipsis from the direction indicated by the arrow. <gasps> Ooh, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. The circle appears as an ellipse. Thus we find when we look at any circle from the side, it appears elliptical. The above illustration show a circle in a square and the same circle in a square when it's drawn in perspective. All right. Um, I'm going to do this very poorly because then we're going to get into how, but might as well show what's going on. So first we got, let's do one point in the right thing. Got a circle, a circle, circle. And then I could just use the uh, the circle template, but that seems like a lot of work. So here's my good good circle right here. Look at that. That's super good. And then we're going to drag this over here because it doesn't matter where it is. And now I'm going to do one in perspective, and it's going to be just as good. Look at that good ass circle. Boom. Same illustrations, obviously, right here, show a circle in the square and the same circle in a square when it is drawn in perspective. The circle drawn in perspective becomes an ellipse if you did it right. The end of the cylinders, when drawn in perspective, become ellipse. The drawing, drawing the ellipse freehand. Make a rectangle, the desired length and width. All right, here, now we're going to learn how to do this properly. Uh, so then we're going to split this into the proper uh, quarters. Last summer, the hottest it got here, and also the time I dies. It was about 37 degrees Celsius, which equals 116 Fahrenheit, which also equals 320 Kelvin. There we go. There we go. Yeah, without Kelvin, I just can't follow it. <laughs> no, nah, seriously, the 116.6 is brutal. All right, so that means we know that this... Let's hop back here. Grab a purple. Yeah, well, probably we'll do red. Okay, so we got this rectangle and or square-like shape divided into quarters. Make a rectangle the desired length and width of the ellipse. The ellipse will touch the rectangle at the center point on each of its sides. With the rectangle as a guide, practice filling in an ellipse with a free pencil line. With a little practice, it's surprisingly surprising how closely the freehand line will approach a true ellipse. That sounds incredibly wrong. But let's do it. Let's do it, fam. <laughs> oh. 
Ah, too big. Wrong layer, crunk. Boom. Oh, oh, yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm never gonna... I'm never gonna do like a freehand circle. I'm not even gonna try. Like that's just pointless. I got I got guides for that. Um, three mechanical ways to make an ellipse. Well, Haku, that's because you're magic. I can definitely do it a little better on paper, but not with guides and stuff. I I can't do like I could do a circle probably if I did it quick and like. Yeah, that not, but on paper I can do a little better. But like to actually fit it to a specific, um, specific layout um, requires way too much um, finesse. At the same time as being able to track future movements, just not like to be able to go through and hit all four of these points. Maybe I'll practice doing that a little bit. But to go through and be able to hit all four of these points consistently with a uh, pencil or pen or stylus does not sound easy. Uh, make an ellipse to spill to to fill space A. Uh, first with pair of dividers. Uh, all of these use rubber bands and tacks or a compass. None of which I'm going to use on um, on my tablet. So I'm going to skip by the mechanical ways. Here's another way to make an ellipse. So we're going to make a circle coming out from here. So I'm going to go ahead and just to see how this works. This feels like it is not the way I want to do this. But let me use the circle guide here. Uh, I'm just going to bring it in. <laughs> nope. Nope. Work on the guide, damn it. Okay, so it does that. Then it says to basically do another one centered so that the outside circle meets the farthest point on this perspective. All right, so for this, what it had me do, uh, go away ruler, hide ruler. Okay, so this inner circle goes to the narrowest point of the box. The outer circle goes to the uh, farthest away box. Okay, and then it says to draw, draw lines out like the spokes of a wheel. So that's what we're going to do here. There you go. Also, um, go ahead and post your uh, promo tweets for your upcoming Kickstarter. If we can get some love on those, we all know Kickstarters live or die on word of mouth. So, want to help my my boy out. Also, Francita's working on this Kickstarter as well. I know you did already, but you can do it again because there's new people here. And these people love Francita, so even if they hate you, they'll probably help boost it because they love Francita. <laughs> All right, it looks like multiple sides. There you go. This game looks sweet. If you could uh, provide a boost to that, that would be absolutely lovely. Yeah, these are going out. That's kind of weird, but I'm going to keep doing it. Okay, so now I have all these spokes drawn out on this nightmare. Where they touch the large circle, draw lines parallel to the width line. Oh, that's weird. All right, all right, this is weird. I'm into it though. I'm getting into it, I'm figuring it out. Thank you, Reen. Okay, I see what they're doing now. I see what this wild thing is doing. Okay. 
Here we go, fam. That's how this works. Got to figure it out. Okay, I got this figured out. So anytime it hits the small circle, we do a line along the length. Every time it hits the large circle, we do a line against the width, like it said, which didn't make sense to me at first, but now it does. Wait, wait, am I supposed to do it the other way? Okay, we're going to say... Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then you do the same on the other side. So now what you're looking at is that these, these points right here where these meet, and then this one, obviously. Those are all the points of an ellipse in this shape. So it'd be like, Like that. So that's a, definitely an interesting way to find an ellipse. I'll probably have to go over this a couple more times with me. But um, I'm not going to ask if we see, know why this works because mathematically I got no clue. But does everyone understand how I did this at this point? Um, we'll take those spokes. Where did those go? Okay, yeah. It seems very roundabout. I, I probably wouldn't do it normally, but I can see ways in which it might get used. Uh, but it's definitely a lot of extra work. You're going to really want to make sure that that ellipse is super proper in order to pull something like this off. Um, here's another way to make an ellipse, and that is to pin a ruler and spin it around, which I also can't do on something like this. So we're going to skip that guy. Uh, the long and short axis. So now we have a ellipsis. I'm going to do a ellipse couple ellipses of various sizes looks like we're gonna want here based on what I'm seeing here so let's do that okay the longest line through an ellipse is called the long axis. The ellipse is watching you always. Uh, so that would be the long axis. And this is the short axis. The short line through an ellipse is called the short axis. Where the lines and short axes cross each other, they form square corners. We will consider the long axis forming the crossbar for the letter T. Crossbar T. The relationship between the axis and the T holds true regardless of size, the shape, or the position. So all of these will have, you know, and that makes sense. I actually didn't need to do all these, I don't think, because that makes complete sense that all of these will have right angles based on their shape when going perfectly placed along here in that center where they meet. Regardless of size, they will always have this T line right here. Yes. Okay, so now it says drawing a cylinder on a side. Place one brick on top of the nether.
<laughs> what are you currently working on? For that to do its thing, we're also going to need to know Trek You Blue. <laughs> oh so does that not like does that not give you just like a zip that you can just unzip and shift over because you can just drag and drop fonts in windows now alrighty Okay, this is technically supposed to be two bricks, but it doesn't really matter. Um, we assume that the ends make a square. That is not accurate for this. It's fine. Draw cross lines on the ends and thus find the center. Okay, so now we're going to find the middle. I can just do this, actually. Not allowed, Hair Thulu. You're stuck here. Alright, draw the lines on the end. Let's find the center. This is the center of a circle that touches four sides of the square. The circle may be considered as the end of a cylinder that runs on the brick. Okay. So now we have to go back to drawing circles. <laughs> I believe that is what we are colloquially referred to as a joke. <laughs> also, like, if you need chores done, I hear that's the main reason to get those. Okay, so that, actually let's do a different color for you. Uh, we'll do another red here. So this is the center line. Alright, so now we have to make a circle. So we get to uh, practice this a little bit more. This is going to be an ellipse. Something like that. Okay, let's see here. Oh, oh, oh! Wrong lever, crunk! Okay, so I think, is this wrong? Well, so what I'm looking at here is that the, a should always, oh, oh, I know why. I need to find the length. 
Um, you need to find the longest point. That's that one. Shortest point. So it's not going to be. Mmm. This may have defeated me until next week. I only got about 10 minutes. So let's see here. But yes, thank you so much, everyone. You have a fantastic day. Love you all. Mwah. And thank you for a fantastic stream.